As a business intelligence developer, the best performance dashboards that you can create are the ones that are going to give your users insight into what's happening in real time and to empower them to make immediate action. Let's think of performance dashboards being akin to navigating a sailboat. I know it seems like a little bit of a stretch, but bear with me for a second. Ideally, you'd want to reach a destination. And in doing so, you're probably going to have to make minor course corrections to adjust for day-to-day -day variables such as wind or the direction of the currents. Also, in full transparency, I don't know anything about sailing. So I assume sharks and maybe bears are a problem? This is why you're probably constantly hearing people talk about leading versus lagging indicators when it comes to these types of dashboards. Tracking the right metrics is critical, but you can't be working off of stale data because you're not going to have up-to-date information to make the right decision, even if you're tracking the right thing. The objective to real-time data is to put your users in a position where they're able to react to changes in the data, such as wind and currents, and of course, correct course based on what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis. As you can imagine, it's pretty hard to make a course correction if you can't see where you're going due to stale data being available to you. Let's talk about some concepts in regards to real-time data, how you can implement it, as well as some neat out-of-the-box features that go along with real-time. I'm Jeff, and this is Off the Charts with Jeff. So for most cases, when someone says real-time in the context of business intelligence, they pretty much mean near real-time. This is like, yeah, we care about up-to-date information, but most people aren't expecting sub-second accuracy as you'd expect in a tool that's doing sensor or machine monitoring. The point is typically to be up-to-date, but not replacing a monitoring tool. Those tend to be different things, and you're typically looking at a more specialized tool if you're looking for that kind of hyper real-time capability. But there are tools like Dundas BI that are very flexible, and some of these things can certainly be implemented as part of a dashboard, depending on your needs. I'll get to those later. Since it's difficult to implement something that will work on all data sources, most BI tools that I've seen have opted for what you'd call a pull method of real-time, which solves this problem. In a pull system, you tell your dashboards or your controls how often you think the data is going to change, and it will check for new data on an interval. You're essentially pulling updated information into your visualizations on a timer. And for 99% of people out there, this is good enough because data is not changing that rapidly. Here's how this would look in Dundas BI. I have a view that I've created that have values that are changing every couple of seconds. If I drag some data onto the dashboard and quickly create a visualization with it, I can get started. By the way, this will work with any visual you choose to use. You're not restricted here. Now, the first thing you need to do is disable data caching. Data caching is a feature that exists by default to allow for better performance by skipping the data request phase if you've just recently downloaded the data. But with real time, we don't want this feature. So let's go and turn it off. And all you need to do from this point on is find a property called data auto refresh interval. Put in the number of seconds that you want here, and it will tell your visualization how many seconds it should wait until it should go fetch new data on a pull system. That's all it takes, and you can easily keep your dashboards up to date using a system like this while people are looking at it. There's also another form, contrary to the pull system that I just described, which is the push system. If you're not familiar with this, it's where data isn't updated from the visualization, it's waiting on the data source for a change, which is going to trigger an update. So there's a lot less communication back and forth, and you know you have up-to-date data because this thing triggered an update. If you want to do something like this in Dundas BI, and you've got your heart absolutely set on it, you can do it. It's flexible enough, but it is going to take some code. I would approach this using something like HTML5's WebSockets API, which can readily have JavaScript that will speak to a server application to allow for a notification to take place. What's going to happen is you would have to go and create some kind of notification service, as this is going to be different depending on what type of data source you're using. So as an update's taking place, you need to somehow trigger that service to send out notifications to anybody that's subscribed to it. On the dashboard side, it's fairly simple. You would subscribe to this service that you've written, 
and simply wait on that event for a notification to take place. If you get the notification that you need to update, from the perspective of Dundas BI, all you need to do is call this load data method that exists on every visualization control. So don't do anything, sit and wait till you get your notification, and off to the races. You simply just add that hookup to the service once the dashboard loads. So it is fairly simple to implement this. You would have to go and create that backend very quickly though, because that is specialized to your own needs. Now from the perspective of your dashboard, there's a few features that are very useful that go along with real-time updating that you should know about. On charts and gauges, there's a specific animation property that can help alert the user visually to changes by allowing for a smooth transition. It's worthwhile playing with these uh, because you might want a different experience and you can certainly change these to get a different feel, depending on how fast you want it to animate or what style it's gonna be used. So here's a couple side-by-sides. So you can see some of the differences, but certainly play with it. If you're using a data table, there's properties that allow for automatic highlighting of cells that have recently changed. Really helpful if you've got tabular data because it is tough if it just sort of flashes and you don't notice a difference. Finally, there is the capability to do something custom if you'd like a completely different experience. This is a pretty cool dashboard. It's a call center dashboard. And if you look at the bottom left-hand corner, we're showing the number of calls in queue. You'll notice every once in a while that that image of a phone is shaking. That's to draw the user's attention to a change in the previous value. Now to do something like this, every visualization that you have on a dashboard has an event called data changed. And all we've done here is stick a single line of code in here that's gonna shake the image every time the data has changed for this data label that we're showing. By the way, here's the code if you're interested, something that's really easy to implement. And there's a lot of neat animations that you could add on top of this using this data changed idea. So that's it. There's a lot of potential here when it comes to real time, and it all depends on what you need and how it makes sense for you to set it up. Also, if you like the idea of taking your dashboards to the next level, take a look at the video that we did on adding write back capabilities to your dashboard, as understanding this area will help essentially build full applications out of your dashboards. There's a ton of potential here, and it's really worth exploring if you've not seen it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.